This is Coogan Cassius for Eiffel TV, proudly sponsored by Everlast with the Ben Davison Performance Centre here in Essex. I'm joined by the champ himself, uh, Lee Wood. How are you, mate? Fantastic, thank you. Here to make some noise, get you some views, shout a few people out, cause a bit of trouble. Your family. <laughs> Do you know what? There was someone, I was meaning to ask this ages ago, there was someone on your social media team that always used to put out the same post and used to tag like a few people in. This has gone on for like a few years. On Twitter. On Twitter. What? Who the was that? The countdown people. The countdown. So it, it might have been, but I always remember there was always a post. <laughs> but it's gone on for like seven or eight years. Yeah. It's either Minnow or Dom Topless, I think. One of them two. They do the countdown. It's quite good, really. It pisses people off. Even people I'm fighting, they always get it every day. My face pop up, the post or days to go. It's like a countdown. I'm going to get knocked out in 45 days. <laughs> Must be brilliant. Well, I just remember something. And like I said, it's not something new. Uh, this is when people didn't really know who you was, actually, with no disrespect. Yeah. Before, kind of... Before my last fight, apparently. <laughs> I've only had one fight, you know. <laughs> people think I've only had one fight. It's mad. But um, people always used to say, though, 20 years has become overnight success. It's kind of true, isn't it? It only takes that one, that one fight. So. But I think, listen, that is a bit tongue-in-cheek to say no one knew you because people did on the boxing scene know who you were, but I think kind of out of all the success stories, uh, there's not really many that compare to yours to kind of what you went through to, to get to where you're at now. Absolutely. Even that camp, that's why I was so emotional after, not because of the years. It was a bit to do with the years to get there, but um, that camp, like having a bad shoulder, I had a really bad shoulder, you know, I had the operation in October. Eight weeks before the fight was when I first started punching, which for a world title fight, a lot of people, I'm not, I'm not going to speak on other people's behalf, but a lot of people said, you know what, I'm not punching yet, let's put it back. But I was like, no, I'm, I'm not pulling out of this, fuck this. And I um, started punching eight weeks before in my first spar, did a bit of body spar with everyone. God's honest truth, first spar, doing some body spar, and Luke McCormack, boom, clash dead, massive court, so couldn't spar. <laughs> but um, it just added to the added to the drama of everything for me, you know, everything that I've been from my career up until that point. Same kind of thing with the camp. You get setbacks, you get things you have to overcome. And um, that's why when I got the job done, I was quite emotional because I know I'd been for a lot of that camp. So, I mean, from the the, kind of the Kanzu fight, the Conan fight, etc. I think you're kind of heading into fights now. I and mean, we'll come on to the Santa Cruz situation now, but you're, you're going into fights now where you're not necessarily being <laughs> written off in fights before the fight. Uh, some, some may do, but I'm saying it's not a, like a foregone conclusion. I think when uh, that... I, I do like that aspect of it, the underdog or um, you know, all the critics and the comments. I like to see them, put them to one side and read them. Every other day, it's like, what is he saying, right? Bastards, I'm going to show you. <laughs> no, it kind of, it fuels me. Especially when it's people that know boxing or on the scene a long time. It does, it does fuel me, so it's nice to have that aspect. But I can do it the other way, I can be the favourite and win. But I do prefer to be the underdog and have that side, um, that bit of fuel in the fire. I think that the biggest aspect of your game, which you and one of the people you've been around and, and trained alongside, sparred or whatever, that have known that kind of power element, but that's really coming uh, to fruition on, on the big scene. We, we saw that at Fight Camp, we've seen that with Michael Conlon. So that aspect of it, something that you already knew, but just has been put out to a wider audience that that's a, a very kind of dangerous tool in your, in your arsenal. Yeah, I think it's... It's a number of things like, obviously they'd write me off because of previous fights and since training down here with Ben, number one, I train harder. It's been challenging when I first came around, I thought, God, is he just trying to test me these first few weeks or is this how to train? <laughs> but it just, must be just trying to test me to see if I'm going to quit, but that's, that's the standard. That's the standard, that's the level, that's how hard it is. Um, so there's that the first thing, we train harder down here and then the second thing and the most important thing is we train smarter. Um, so them two things combined is what people don't take into consideration when they look at my last my previous fights before coming here. They thought I was fighting him, we got beat by him, forget it. And then I win that and it's like, well, he won that, but the next fight, he won't beat him, forget it. And they constantly um, don't want to let go of that past fight when I boxed terrible, when I was training to exercise for less and didn't have a game plan and just rocking up and just hoping for the best. So yeah, it's, it's quite good. Um, my friends have made a lot of money and um, 
hopefully they make a, money, a lot of money in my next fight as well because we all need a holiday. <laughs> Uh, we, we don't need a holiday, we've got the weather right here at the moment, um, but that's uh, a different uh, talking matter. Um, let's talk about, obviously, the news that came out yesterday that uh, it has been ordered for you now to fight Leo Santa Cruz, uh, more to the point as well that the unification he was seeking with Ray Vargas has been denied. Uh, the report said that Santa Cruz had 24 hours. Now, this interview will go out today, which is Wednesday the 20th. We don't kind of know, or you can probably tell us, or maybe not, I don't know, that 24 hour period, what, what? I'm not sure if I'm allowed to, but what I will say is, I think he's up for the fight, I think he wants to defend, um, just the inkling, um, which is good, but you know, boxing's, the politics side of boxing is crazy, I'm not, I'm not talking about the belts, I'm just talking about in general, you know, um, from where I've come from, like pretty much 10 years, Screaming and begging for a fight, I can get one now. Um, you know, I'm in a position where I've got some big fights coming up, but the politics is still kind of letting me down and not knowing what's happening. Then it can all change overnight. You know, like one day you just you feel like oh, nothing's happening, I don't know what's happening, I don't know when I'm fighting. That's tied up, they're not doing anything about that. And you're looking around thinking, I just want to know what's happening. And then one, one, one day later, um, you pretty much know the direction you're in. And that happens all the time in boxing. And I tell all these, these lads, like, then got a fight coming up and they want to go home. and Doss about and wait till they get a date, but just stay in the gym. All of the fighters, prospects, stay in the gym because that phone can ring at any time. Um, even in the position I'm in now, like things can change so fast. Luckily, I'm always in the gym because I've always had that and I've always benefited from doing that. Um, same with the Kanzu fight, I had six weeks' notice, but I was in the gym. If I wasn't in the gym, that would have never happened. The Conlon fight would have never happened, and this next big fight wouldn't have been there. So, um, just a message to all you like, just stay ready because um, boxing, it can change very fast. And as Sometimes you look at a direction, things are going, then that fight moves up, he vacates, he gets beat, and um, it's wide open. So, to your understanding, just going back to this situation with uh, Santa Cruz, um, is that 24 hours that he's got to decide what he's doing, is that accurate? Because obviously that kind of falls into today. So, are you expecting some kind of news regarding that from Santa Cruz and his team? Yeah, I'm sure um, my promoter will um, announce something um, but possibly have heard contact uh, on his decision either way. He has to make a decision whether he's going to fight or, or vacate. Um, so that should come out today or tomorrow. And um, and then I think negotiation period will start. Um, if nothing happens with that, then he goes to purse bid. So the politics of boxing isn't completely out of the way yet. But um, you know we know the direction we're going in. Um, there's a few other details we need to sort out. And um, but it's looking likely that I will fight him next. If there is a situation where the title is vacated is I'm assuming like your team and yourself have kind of looked at those options if that was the case absolutely you have to weigh up all options just in case they happen um, then you know pretty much what direction you're going in um, if it vacates that uh, makes me super champion that gives me the ability to uh, unify as well so um, we'll, we'll see what happens um, we know we've got our options all there so we have to wait to see which direction it goes in um, I put a uh, a tweet, no, uh, a photo out yesterday on Instagram of us both at the forest ground and, um, you know, created a bit of a storm, but um, that probably won't be likely just because of the time of year. I would never say never, you never know. Um, people sit outside, watch the football all, all year round. A bit longer with boxing, it'd be quite cold, but um, you never know. Never say never, um, but I'm just um, creating the interest and that fight will happen at the city ground. I'm confident, um, but it'll probably be next year, but you never, never say never, you never know. It is obviously, I know you, you kind of make references to the politics there, and if you are in a situation where this does go to a purse situation, it, I'm assuming that there is that could benefit you as well in a purse situation because of kind of the financial splits, etc. etc. Well, apparently, it's all that does own money, so we get, we get to see how much of that is in the tank. Um, and yeah, I, I'd suggest that um, Eddie would possibly win the bid, but you never know, you know, there's these big, big promoters involved. Louis Santa Cruz, PBC, but um, I'd back Eddie as he backs me, so um, we'll, we'll see. That'll be exciting as well to see what happens, I guess. Exciting to look at the numbers. <laughs> he, he, I can't remember which fight I was talking to him about, but I, I said to him, obviously I was messing around and I said to him, oh, yeah, you, you won the purse bid for, for whatever fight, it might have been the Callum Smith fight, I think. And uh, I said to him, oh, you finally won a purse bid. 
and uh, he went, well, actually, can we talk about it? Because he hates that. He hates, like, the referencing to there's a few bids that have gone out, but it's boxing. It happens in boxing, and I think, like, when he does lose a purse bid, it gets highlighted more so. But, you yeah, know. And obviously, they've, um, they have to be smart with the revenue, how much they're willing to put up, how much they're willing to take the profit on as well. So, um, and I think re recently, I think promoters are just trying to win purse bids just to get one over on Eddie and not actually make money. Um, I may be wrong, but you know it's it's great for boxers because we're getting bid against and getting higher bids and getting paid more. So the more competition that's out there with the promoters, the better for the fire. Um, is it more than likely, though, regardless of kind of what happens, this is a, a fight that will take place in in the US? He's rival. You know, um, when I was younger, when I first turned pro, the mates used to mess about and say, "Oh, look, promise me." I'll get this food. I remember when someone bought me some food one time. I'm going to get this food. I was like, oh, you don't have to. Like, no, I'm going to get this food, but promise me, when we're fighting Vegas, I want a ticket. I was like, all right, sweet. Um, so, yeah, you know, Vegas is, is a massive trip away, away day. Um, that'd be huge. Uh, I'm not sure if it would end up there, but you never know. You don't know what's going to happen. Like I said, boxing has many twists and turns, and um, Vegas would be amazing. Um, Nottingham, if it's not city grand, it's finding a place big enough, so it'll probably be somewhere else. But um, we'll see. You never say never. Like the city grand, there's a World Cup coming up, but it'll be cold. So it's probably, I don't know. Like, is it could be a first to do it? You never know. You never say never. Um, you know, boxing's a crazy game, and um, if it demands it, then it demands it. Lee, when we spoke, I um, can't remember what show it was at. It was after a show. I got you and Eddie Hearn together in, in the office and kind of weighing out the options. I think this was not too long after. The, the, oh, the warrant fight. Okay. So, um, obviously, the name's being discussed back then. Things have changed kind of now. We know, like, like for example, uh, Michael Conlon is, is in action at the, the Fela uh, Festival next month in, in Belfast. So, Options for you now, it's kind of, you know where you're at with this, but those kind of fights like that, Conan fight, etc., that's, that's a little bit away now because you're concentrated on, on securing this Santa Cruz fight. Yeah, always. You know, um, after that fight, obviously not straight after, but a few months later, I was getting stick off all the Irish. Not all the Irish, I've got a lot of Irish on my side, so massive thank you to you. But um, some of the Irish that aren't on my side, you know, I get like, oh, why don't you fight um, Conan next? You know, you don't want the rematch, you're scared of the rematch. That fight we boxed for was for the right to fight Santa Cruz. So why would I fight him and give him a rematch and, and just give away what I've just fought for? If, 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 he, if he beat me, which wouldn't have happened, if he beat me, he'd have boxed Santa Cruz. Yeah, that's what we fought for. So um, am I shying away from the rematch? Absolutely not. Will that happen eventually? I think so. I want it. So he says he, he's allowed, he wants it. So it'll happen eventually. But, you know, I won that fight for this to get f for the right to fight for the super title and to shut a lot of people up about the regular belt. So um, that's what's in my sights next, whether we fight him or I get upgraded. Um, and then we either fight Santa Cruz or Warrington, another name, and then that kind of fight is, is there. Yeah, I mean, we're expecting kind of Josh Warrington to announce a fight soon as well. That, that division there, there's so many options. And I remember you saying in that interview I did with you and Eddie Hearn, you said that, you know, if I, I kind of gave you a scenario, if there was more money to fight Conlon ahead of fighting for kind of, uh, whether it's unification or kind of the super belt, you'd, you'd go with that and, and not make it kind of the financial thing that was going to lead you. Is that still the same case? Don't get me wrong. It's not like I'll be fighting for crazy money or fighting for nothing. It's still good money. Yeah. All my fights next to a decent, um, decent paydays. But, um, you know, for me, it's a no-brainer to, to go upgraded or fight for... Um, a unification fight or fight the rematch for more money it's a no-brainer for me um, you know it's it's history and it's not going to get changed I've already beat him so money's irrelevant you know everyone needs money and hopefully left to box and I made enough money to have the freedom to come and go as I please and um, set my kids up um, which I'm on the way as well so but for me the history is more important um, winning them belts beating them names and that Conlon rematch will be there he, he wants up he's got an ego so he wants to try and put that right which he's not going to but they're going to pay me a lot of money to let them try, so be it. OK, well, listen, like I said, today, I think, just time check on this, it's about midday, uh, Wednesday 20th, and I'm only saying that because I feel like there could be some news imminent. I don't want this, like, going out into, like... 
wouldn't make sense if there are, is some news to come out later on. That's basically the best thing to do. Um, okay, well, listen. Um, we ain't calling people out, have we? We ain't calling anyone out. We haven't been I think you're kind of focused on where you're, you're heading. Everyone's been calling me out. Who's been calling you out? Give us an Everybody. update. Um, is it Ramirez? Ramirez, is it? Uh, quite, I don't even know his name. He was two Olympic gold medals, so I should know his name. He's been calling me out. Uh, Conlon said there's bits on his videos. Um, Nick Ball, five foot meatball. He's not beat anyone. He's been calling me out. Ugh, can't catch a break. Who else? Um, we had a few people call me out, to be fair. Oh, that other American kid that lost to Navarre, he been calling me out. There's a few more, but it's nice. It's nice to have fights. There. There's nothing wrong with that. It's nice to have people that want to fight you, because I've been on that side of things for <laughs> a long time, for up, up, probably for six years, trying to beg him for a fight. Um, one time I tweeted Josh Warrington in, in 2018. No one knew who I was, and I tweeted him, and um, there was a picture of his, his teeth that looked terrible, and I put the Baby Shark video on it. It was on a magazine, and I put the Baby Shark on it. <laughs> so I went, I zoom in and out of his teeth. It's on my Twitter still somewhere. I was just trying to goad him into a fight, because no one would fight me, and probably everyone thought, who the fuck's he calling him out? Um, but as time goes on, you know, now it kind of, um, kind of makes sense. I've always backed myself, um, and I can't really blame people for trying to get a fight, because sometimes that's the only way to do it. Yeah, you were, you were the hunter. You still are a hunter, but you are the hunted as well now. The difference is that I won't, if I could fight regular and I could fight all these guys, that would be brilliant. If it was all in tournaments, um, I was going to tweet the other day, there should be a, a World Series of boxing for the featherweight division. Imagine that, you know, there's some good, good fights we made, but they're all cross-promoted promoters, but um, that would be unbelievable. Why not? And then all these other people, you know, they can get into position. There should be them at every single level. British title level, European title level, world title level, a tournament. It just keeps everyone fighting, keeps everyone active. I don't know why there's not, but probably, like I sort of said, the promoter, the promoter side of things are all separate platforms and that. But um, it would be really good to have on every level, keep everyone busy. And then you know who's the best, don't you? Because they've had to come the hard way. Yeah, I think the tournaments, the, the ones we've seen over the last few recent years, like the, the World Boxing Super Series, kind of, it's made people fight each other, you know, and it's kind of taken that politics. Well, so they're not going to moan about, oh, well, there's not enough money in it. They put up some big money that um, do USB, so. Yeah, we'll see. Uh, we'll see what happens, but um, hopefully my fight now, I know what's happening, and we'll get a decision shortly. Okay, uh, Lee Wood, thank you very much for talking to IFL TV and uh, we'll await news and uh, we'll catch up with you again kind of things, when things are a little bit more confirmed for you. Sweet, mate. Talk to you soon. Welcome, Team Everlast, to the Team Everlast Fitness Act. Download the Everlast Fitness app and find your greatness within.